We'll be looking at uh, Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course to choose, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence or from there unto Patera, and finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, Phoenicia, uh, we went ab abroad, aboard, and set forth. Now, when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into uh, Syria and landed uh, at Tyre, for there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship and then we, they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to uh, Ptolemius and uh, saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist which was of the one of the seven and ab abode with him. And the same man had four daughters virgins which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying the will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Mason of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James. And all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews uh, there are which believe. And they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that uh, we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them, Take them and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save or except only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. 
Then Paul took the men and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth, teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. For they had seen before uh, with him in the city uh, Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing, some another among the multitude, and when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers, in other words, he was carried by the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying, Away with him! And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar, and ledest out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer, or allow me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned, beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, And now we move into Acts chapter 22. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defence which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence. And he saith, I am verily or truly a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus of a city of in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that um, as I made my journey and was come nigh or near unto Damascus, about noon suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom 
thou persecutest. So although he was persecuting and he believed that he was persecuting the Christians, in actual fact he was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ himself because they were his people. They had become children of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake uh, to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging. In other words, they would, they would whip him, uh, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge or whip a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. And straightway he departed from him, which should have examined him, and departed from him. Oh, sorry, I already said that. Uh, and the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all the council to appear and brought Paul down to set and set him before them. So, you know, all these believers, they were, they were taken, they were put in prison for preaching the gospel and for, and for um, doing wonderful things. Uh, exploits for the Lord and the Lord had healed people by their hands and this was the time when healing was in vogue in other words the laying on of hands and healing people by means of laying on of hands and so you know these um, these were signed gifts these were gifts that are not for today but they were in these particular days and the main thing is that we come to faith in Christ that we have the freedom which is only found through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be free from the burden of sin 
if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified upon the cross, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, if you put your faith in him, your soul can be saved. He shed his precious blood for the redemption of our soul. The redemption of our soul is precious unto the Lord. He wants to redeem your soul by the precious blood of his beloved son, the one who shed that blood on the cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So again, what do you need to do? Come in repentance toward God. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Why go down to hell when there's absolutely no need? You need to be saved and you need to be saved right now. This is an urgent message. You know, we as gospel preachers call you to repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Agree with God that you are a sinner. Just admit that to God. Yes, I realize that I'm a hell-deserving sinner, but thy son has died for me upon the cross. And then simply come to Christ. Put your faith alone in him for your eternal salvation. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And remember, it's either heaven or hell, depending on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.